All right, and here we go. Welcome into the Rocky Top Insider post game show. It is a final, a final in Tuscaloosa, number four, Alabama 52, Tennessee 24. Man, it is late here on a Saturday night, but everything is wrapped up. The game is done. The, the press conferences are done. And now we got to break it down. So, of course, we'll bring in my other partner in crime here, Ryan Shumpert of the RTI team. Good evening, Ryan. How are you doing after the game today? Doing well. That was a, uh, an interesting game for sure. Um, yeah. Tennessee really played well for uh, the vast majority of it. Four things kind of fell apart uh, for them in the fourth quarter. So excited to get into all of it. Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I'll start with this. You know, one thing that I talked about in my official prediction for how the game was going to go was I, I said that, you know, I really felt like this was going to be a game that was similar to some of the other games that Tennessee has had this year in the sense of, Yes, you may not come out of it, come out of this game with a win. Heck, you might not even be within one score like you were last week. But I do think it's a game where you do see a lot of positives and you can say, you know what, Tennessee might not have been there yet, but you do see that it's going in the right direction. Uh, Ryan, I, I don't know, you know, what could have won Tennessee this game, certainly a better fourth quarter. But you do see, I think, as the wheels start turning, as Tennessee does go on in future years and be able to build up this team's uh, depth a little bit, be able to build up some of the talent level a little bit. I, I think what we are seeing from Tennessee, even in, you know, a almost a 30 point loss, I, I think that there are still plenty of positives that you can take away from the game. No, there, there definitely are. And I think one thing that, that really stands out, you're saying what's the difference between, you know, Tennessee and getting, being able to get over that hump. I think one thing is their play on the offensive line had no chance of running the ball tonight. Really no success at all yeah. in Tennessee's offense. Just couldn't move the ball because of that. Tennessee has the, the three big chunk plays, two of them for touchdowns. One sets up Tennessee's first touchdown of the game. Besides that, they couldn't really do anything on offense. I think there was a stretch there from the end of the first quarter to midway in the third quarter. Tennessee didn't get a first down. Um, they couldn't, like I said, couldn't run the ball at all. And then the other thing you hit on, it's just a depth. I mean, Tennessee's defense, again, I mean, it, it feels weird to stay in a game where they gave up 52 points, but they, they did seem to play well, in, in my opinion, especially with more guys injured. Warren Burrell down, Kamal Haddon hadn't played at all this season before last week. He goes out there, has, has a good game tonight, has eight tackles. So, it, it, and you saw it. We I talked about it this week. We talked about it this week. Tennessee's been defense, played so many snaps last week, 101. This was their eighth straight game before the bye week. It felt like it was just inevitable that things were going to collapse on Tennessee's defense in the second half. They came out in the third quarter and played probably their three, at least three of their best possessions of the game. Yeah. But then in the fourth quarter, things fell apart. And it's not all on them. Two short fields, Tennessee's offense gave them, put them in a bad situation. But uh, I'd say the biggest play of the game, the, the backbreaker, they're early in the fourth quarter, Tennessee down by seven after the second or the touchdown pass to Tillman. Tennessee has Alabama third and 15. Jamison Williams gets behind Tennessee's defense, a long catch. Next play, Alabama scores. And, and the tide never looked back after that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think when you look at the score, it is a little bit misleading. Yes, uh, when you look at the when you look at the whole game in total, you can see where the ending of the game dropped off quite a bit. But you're right. You know, yes, Alabama put up 28 points in the fourth quarter. They put up 24 points in the first three quarters combined. I, I think really, if you go back to the second half against Ole Miss and you combine that with the first half or so the first three quarters of this game against Alabama I think that's a really good showing for Tennessee's defense against two of the top offensive teams in the country certainly yes the the ending did fall off a little bit we'll, we'll get into some of the things that allowed that to happen or just some of the factors that went into it but I do think that at the end of the day eight straight games right and you in your week seven yeah. game is against Ole Miss your week eight game is against Alabama I think you saw it. Tennessee ran out of steam a little bit. Now, again, if they had had a bye week two weeks ago, would it have really mattered in this game? I don't know. But I do think that eight straight games, again, I, I think that's something significant. Ryan, I want to go up to the other side of the ball real quick, to the offense. A little bit of good, a little bit of bad. I, I, I think that Hendon Hooker's performance, once again this week, he's continuing the trend of – increasing his passing yards by the week again that has been every single start of this season except for one where he only tied the previous week he continues that streak this uh this game with 282 yards tosses three uh three touchdowns in the process he has just proven to be a leader on this team a, a resilient guy a, a guy who is tough as nails he said after the game hey you know what 
I felt like I would have let my team down if I hadn't played. There was a lot of talk about whether people, whether, you know, people would have started Hinton Hooker or not. To him, it was never about that. He felt like he was going to let his team down if he didn't play. I, I, I've really been impressed by what we've seen from him. I, I think that he did as good of a uh, good of a job as he could just with how depleted Tennessee's offensive line was. But that's where I get into a little bit of the bad on the night from the offensive uh, side of the ball. The offensive line wasn't good. And, and I know that we certainly have injuries to talk about. And Cade Mays did not start for the first time this season. That was a big trouble spot for them. But again, I thought this was just the second week of the well, uh, second week in a row, a little bit towards injuries, a little bit towards just overall season exhaustion. But Tennessee just couldn't get the run game going this week. I, I felt like that was a big part of the offense, taking a little while to get going there uh, after they came out with those initial first two touchdowns. You're right. And you go back and look at the first quarter. I think Tennessee, or maybe one of them was early in the second quarter, but Tennessee has pair of third and ones. They just try to line up and run up the middle, which has been what they do, you know, in most of those case scenarios. Yeah. And they didn't get close to getting the first down on either of them. And at that point, you know, it's pretty apparent. You're just not going to line up and run at Alabama. You're going to have to make some some chunk plays happen. And to Tennessee's credit, that's what they did. Tennessee, 24 points, the most Tennessee scored against Alabama since 2003. How, how crazy is that stat? Uh, the most they scored against Wild. Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> the most they scored in, in regulation against Alabama since 2001. So there were certainly some good things, but it's going to be really hard for Tennessee to pull an upset like that when your defense is on the field as much as it was and your offense just can't really sustain drives. And, and that really was the case tonight. And I think, like I said, most of it goes to the, the offensive line, just didn't really have a chance against Alabama. I, K. Mays probably – the last game of the year, you want him injured. Dane Davis going in and having to face Will Anderson, one of the best pass rushers in the SEC. Just a bad matchup from Tennessee. And I did think you saw from Hooker into being banged up, you know, injured. Tennessee didn't want, want him to run tonight, yeah. and they shouldn't have wanted him to run. You know, that's – getting as little hits on him was as important for Tennessee's season going forward as anything tonight. But one thing on the stats that stand out, Tennessee averaged 6.4 yards per play, actually more than Alabama did tonight. Uh, Alabama ran a lot more plays, obviously, but you take out those three passes, uh, the 39-yard, 7-yard pass to Tillman and the 57-yard pass to Peyton, Tennessee average just 3.5 yards play. There was no sustainability, couldn't put anything together, uh, no long drives. And, again, the chunk plays, those were great. You saw Tennessee get a couple of them later in the game, which they couldn't do against Florida, which, again, you kind of saw Ten – I thought this game played out a lot like the Florida game. Tennessee held in there yeah. a little bit longer in large part due to that Tillman a seven yard touchdown in the second half, but you just, you just can't pull up sets when you're even on the field that much and you just can't sustain drives. Yeah. You certainly just saw the, the overall exhaustion. I just felt like from the team, they played a lot of football, especially in these last two weeks, especially against two of the top ranked offenses in the country. I, I just really felt like, man, Hey, they are deserving of the rest. They're going to get next week. I want to go back to one spot in particular, Man, there's a lot of things we have to talk about for this game. We, we will get into it a little bit more in our podcast coming up later in the middle of the week. Uh, but one thing I want to go back to is penalties. I really felt like Tennessee was not disciplined tonight, whether it was on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball. Frankly, penalties just derailed many of Tennessee's offensive drives. It allowed Alabama to continue offensive drives. I really felt like that was a place where Tennessee – really just we're, we're at a disadvantage there. The final uh, numbers on the penalties, Tennessee had 12 for 98 yards. Alabama had four for 30 yards. So again, yes, there was a little bit of home cooking. Yes, there were a couple of calls here and there where I really felt like Alabama got away with something or maybe Tennessee didn't do something as egregious as, as should have been called. But either way, that was definitely a place that hurt Tennessee tonight. No, it definitely was, especially in the first half offensively. A handful of situations where you're in third and reasonable, you're in second and reasonable, and you have false start. The pre-snap penalties especially, which Tennessee had done just a great job of cleaning up on, really from the, the pit game forward. And there were a couple plays game, where – It wasn't bad. There were a couple moments, too, where Tennessee had back-to-back -back penalties. That yep. really hurt a couple of drives there. Where uh, You're so right. Again, you're at that third and one, and then all of a sudden – you know, you're back five yards, back five yards again. And now that's not even a third and manageable. That's a third and 11. Tennessee just had no, no success moving the ball against Alabama, especially backed up that kind of, uh, that kind of distance on third down. 
Yeah, and I think you saw Tennessee and Josh Heifel didn't have any confidence that they could block Alabama on third and long. Yeah. You saw a lot of third down run plays. You saw a lot of third down screen passes. And, I mean, honestly, you can criticize it for being too conservative, but that that concern was very well justified. Tennessee was – offensive line did not hold up particularly well in the past game. And one thing that we, we haven't gotten to that was just – probably the biggest story in the game is the third downs. I mean, Alabama 15 and 20 yeah. on third down, maybe the best conversion rate I've seen when you have that many plays, at least in yeah. a long, long time, that many third downs convert 75% of them on the other end, Tennessee at two of 13, I believe is the final tally. Didn't it was bad. Single, didn't get a single third down conversion in the second half. So they, and that's kind of where this game was weird because even when Tennessee was just down seven, in the fourth quarter, it really didn't feel like Tennessee should be down seven. It seemed like Alabama was playing better than that. Now, obviously, it kind of canceled out. Tennessee did not play bad enough to, to lose that game by doing some quick math here, 28 points. It, it wasn't, you know, that big of a, a, a deficit. Uh, so I kind of went misleading in both ways. Started the fourth quarter, I think the game was misleadingly close. Alabama was, while, you know, only up seven, completely in control of the game. And then it kind of, in the end, went misleading with the, the score looking a little bigger than it really was. Tennessee falls to Alabama on the night, 52 to 24. Ryan, any kind of closing thoughts on the way out of here for our instant reaction? Not a ton. Uh, I thought Byron Young, again, had a really good game. Uh, he continues to get a lot better, really, week, week by week. And then on the third, you know, kind of analyzing the third downs, I thought some early in the game, and I kind of like, I've, I think I've said it on here, I kind of like Tennessee not blitzing a ton on third downs because they really haven't gotten home even when they have blitzed where I think they went wrong tonight or what hurt them tonight. They bring three a lot. They don't have Byron Young or Tyler Barron in on some of those situations. And then you got these big guys that are Caleb Tremblay, a couple of them, I think, uh, Latrell Bumpus had one too. You're back there. Bryce Young has all day to throw, and then he scrambles, and you're out there trying to make tackles. You're slow defense alignment, big defense alignment, seven seconds into the play, very tired already. Yeah. Didn't really have much of a chance. And then kind of on the same note, the, the quarterback running, uh, again, seemed to kill Tennessee tonight. Wasn't nearly as many yards. Uh, certainly Bryce Young doesn't like to run the ball as much as Matt Corral. But uh, some huge plays that, that he made with his legs on third downs. And where last week, I think, you know, Tim Banks, Banks didn't really necessarily put his defense in the best, pull, best spot to get those stops. Tonight, I thought he did a good job. Tennessee just missed too many tackles uh, on Bryce Young. Alante Taylor had a really bad one that stands out in the first half. And then on the uh, third down, Run where Young scores a touchdown in the third quarter, reviewed, say he fumbles, say uh, Alabama recovers. That one, Aaron Beasley got broken really bad. Should have had a tackle short of the first down. And kind of on that note, uh, pretty forgettable night for Aaron Beasley. Probably his worst game of the season, if I, I had to guess. Tennessee will be heading into the bye week in week nine, their first of the season, which is kind of crazy to think about. They played the entirety of the Josh Heupel era to date so far up with that a bye week. I, I think this is going to be a really big week for Tennessee to get healthy once again. There's a lot of key guys that they're waiting on and, and who will be able to use that extra week to get healthy. Ryan, again, like I had said a couple minutes ago, we got a ton of things to talk about from this game coming up later this week. We will have articles. We will have podcasts. We're getting ready. Uh, we're getting all of that ready for you right now. Otherwise, though, we'll go ahead and close this thing down, man. Week eight is in the books. Alabama wins by a final score of 52 to 24 ryan shumpert let the people know where they can find you yeah find me on twitter at r shump zero zero that's r s c h u m p zero zero hey there you go and you can find me uh, on twitter at rick underscore butler otherwise we're gonna head out of here we will see you back on rocketopinsider.com <laughs>